Hey traders, uh, looks like I'm going to be off work today, so uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, this is the rundown for this week on the earnings, uh, top earnings that are going to be hitting the tape. Uh, some things I'm looking at right here, Toll Brothers reporting tonight after hours, and I'm thinking we're going to start seeing a slowdown in backlogs. And so forward guidance is going to be light on Toll Brothers, in my opinion. I think... Uh, Main Street's going to finally start showing signs of catching up to Wall Street and actually put, trying to push prices higher. Uh, we've got like a wall at the 3700 mark here with the option flow. And uh, you got the option riders. Uh, they're going to do everything in their power to keep prices under 3700 And uh, uh, the, uh, the option buyers are going to try to be pushing it higher. So we're really at a critical stage here on the S&P uh, uh, going into this week. So just heads up on that. And we also have the dollar bouncing off of support. So that is uh, could tend to be more bearish to on the markets for the first time in a long time. So just some things I'm looking at right here. Um, also, uh, so basically... Uh, uh, the auto zone is going to be, uh, it has an extremely high model, multiple. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, thinking on that one too. The guidance is going to be light as consumers are, uh, the main thrust of people who are going to auto zone are the lower end of uh, the economy. And uh, that's the type of part of the economy that does not, uh, you got the section of the economy that's got all kinds of money right now, relatively flush with cash, then you have the lower end that doesn't have any cash. So I'm concerned that AutoZone will be one of those that's going to be on the low end, whereas on the flip side, Chewy, I think it's going to have a blowout quarter. Uh, everybody and her brother's getting pets. I was looking for a Boston Terrier for my mother for Christmas, and uh, my grandfather, uh, it's been you know over 10 years ago, he gave like $300 for his dog. They were wanting between $1,200 and $1,500 for a puppy. I was like, oh, I don't think so. I don't need a dog that bad. But that gives you some idea that the huge demand for people and their pets right now. Everybody's stuck at home. Uh, I think uh, Chewy is going to have a very good quarter. Uh, just basically because everybody's at home taking care of their, their pets or their babies now. And uh, that's one of the themes that I got going on here. Uh, <clears throat> Campbell's Soup. People staying at home. Like I said, the very poor end of society. I think it's going to have a good quarter and good guidance going forward with people being uh, having to resort to canned food uh, to, to penny pinch on the low end of uh, the suck of uh, the economy. People looking for cheaper ways to uh, get by. And uh, so as far as Adobe goes, it's already cons up considerably here. I, I don't know. The uh, price multiples are so high, uh, and it's not gonna, Adobe is not going to be supported the first of the year by Microsoft. So remember that uh, going forward here. Uh, I would think more to the bearish side uh, under that uh, scenario going forward here. <clears throat> and then uh, Costco. I really, I have been mentioning in the chat room, I think Costco is uh, on a uh, reset, setting up for a reset as retail has just really gotten way ahead of itself uh, this uh, Christmas season. And uh, I know Black Friday sales were light, but they had some, uh, they were having coming off of some really good past couple months on Costco. So yeah, I do think their earnings are going to be good, but I do think my personal opinion, any type, I don't think they give guidance either, if memory serves. But there will probably be some con, uh, some comments of being uh, wariness going forward into this quarter on stimulus hopes. So that's another one that I am thinking about here. Oracle, they have just been taking it to the, uh, well, or, well, not, not Oracle, that was Micron, I'm sorry. Uh, see here with the oracle and broadcom uh i could say too much on either one of those i'm sorry on that uh lifeline nope 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 okay that's pretty much the only thing i, I can make an opinion about uh if you guys have any opinions on these earnings please put them in the comments below i, I really like your uh comp feedback on that because i haven't done any detailed research with working
Okay, so far this morning, what I'm seeing, basically same old, same old. We got a dip this morning, not even making it back. We're already wicking before my support. So they still got a bid under this market. And if you're, you know, you're foolish if you're thinking otherwise. And uh, we'll see what happens here. We are starting a new week. We did hit the target, the 3,700, you know, and backing off here. You know, that's where big money is sitting and waiting to pounce it right back down. If it when it does get up there, um, so uh, we have an early bounce already. That suggests to me that they're already trying to support it earlier on this morning. So we'll see what happens going forward here. Uh, so uh, I would have much rather seen it come all the way down to support, and then then basically uh, I would be more bearish on the open scenario uh, right here right now. That's not what it's given us. In Qs, uh, like I said, uh, we got the acceleration uh, growth phase. We got the uh, accumulation phase, in my opinion, on the using the fib fans, and now we're outside of that. So we will see what happens going forward here. <clears throat> uh, we did, we do have. See where where it came down, right here, and found support. So this is, in my opinion, more bearish versus the S and Ps. So uh, right here, right now, my opinion, I, I don't see the bearishness yet this morning, but I would love to see it come all the way back down to the 12,437 today. So uh, that would be a really, really bearish scenario. <clears throat> it wouldn't take much uh, because these markets are so lofty, but that is something uh, I would still be more bearish than bullish tech today uh, going forward in my opinion so we'll see what happens going uh we didn't we came into resistance on the e, uh s and p's we didn't come into resistance on the nasdaq there uh friday so you know just remember that uh going forward uh they were showing a little bit relative weakness even on friday and uh, we're seeing, even seeing more relative right here right now russell uh financials are catching a little hit this morning basically came up above my resistance area uh broke down below it this morning so we'll see what happens here on the russell they are trying to save it so far so some things that uh, i'm seeing right here right now this is a critical resistance zone this is the overbought zone of this trend so basically generally speaking you short up here down here you would look based on the 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 trend short up here go along down here uh that would be your scenario until you finally get a uh massive breakout of that of this uh uh trading zone and we're basically it looks so far it looks like a failed breakout uh friday uh, after market close so uh we'll see what happens um it looks like we're trying to change momentum you know, uh, on the Russell, and we do have relative weakness in the financials this morning. Okay, financials. See this uptrend? This is my target down here, twenty-seven, uh, basically twenty-seven dollar mark for a retrace. Um, we are basically right smack dab at or below. The, uh, we're at twenty-eight seventy-six. So basically, uh, what was a low Friday? Uh, low for Friday was 28.80. So we are right here, right now, trading below Friday's low. Okay, uh, we'll see what happens going forward here. It looks like uh, we're barely holding on to that trend line starting to start in the day here. Let's go on the one hour and see what it's showing. Yeah, basically we're trading right below that trend line on the one hour. But, you know, it's not a clear saying that Hey, the market, the financials are in trouble, but we are seeing some three, four percent declines in Europe already this morning. As you know, I just think it's profit taking. They're saying it's a Brexit issue out of uh, England. That the English banks are catching a big hit, and the pound is catching a nice bid, and it's uh, driving uh, the uh, uh, London uh, banking sector down because of the higher uh, pound this morning or was it the lower pound i can't remember uh well I, the pound actually the pound is is moving big time this morning i can't remember which way it's actually doing it 
think it's higher. And uh, so just keep that in mind that it's driving. We'll get whenever you start seeing currency fluctuations, that unhinges the equity markets. That tends to unhinge them, and we do have a lot of volatility in uh, the currency markets this morning. So just heads up on that. Okay, we're still here at value area high. Volume profile, value area high. We are still right below that uh, on the uh, energy sector coming into this week. So, uh, like I said, typically value area high, you look for short positions, uh, you know, thinking we are going to get oscillation uh, inside of value until proven otherwise. We know it's had an amazing run up. Uh, is there really a significant driving force to, with all the COVID outbreak and stuff, to break out of value ahead uh, before the end of the year? So, basically, the news of the vaccines starting uh, Thursday, I think, of this week is trying. They're trying to drive this out of daily value uh, based on the supposed people getting the vaccine. And we don't even know how many people are going to be lining up to take this vaccine. I, for one, will not take the Pfizer, the Pfizer uh, vaccine. It's too dangerous, in my opinion. Now, the Moderna vaccine, I'm, I am considering. So, and that's uh, uh, is it next, the end of next week or the first of next. Yeah, I think it's the end of the next week that Moderna might be uh, getting FDA approval. Actually, I think the news is out that the FDA is supposed to get approval Thursday of this week on Moderna. They're going to take it under consideration. Okay, so far this morning, I know it's still early. I can't really uh, amount too much of it. Your consumer discretionary is a short-term trend. We are going to be opening below that. Doesn't mean we're going to break down uh, out, of, out of phase, but our consumer discretionary does seem to show signs uh, of weakening uh, here at the open. And our industrial are still inside of Friday's candle. So, you know, we're not breaking down away. Uh, so that's something to noteworthy here. Our, uh, like I said, on our last one here, uh, what was that? Yeah, our consumer discretionary, we are breaking out of below Friday's candle. That, that's what I look for early in the morning are those candles that were breaking prior day's lows. And like I said, our consumer discretionary dogeed out and we're breaking down below trend and below that candle. We are getting an inside candle on Boeing. That's one of our strongest stocks for the session so far. Tesla poking out above candles. Very bullish uh, Tesla chart coming into today. All-time high, 6.07. We're already at 605, could be breaking out to all time high, new all time highs on Tesla. Not really a shortable stock, but uh, you know, that you know, people are going to keep buying into it till they don't. So, uh, take that for what it is. Uh, very extended chart until proven otherwise. Okay, one of the more bearish charts that we're seeing out there. We close at day lows Friday, and now we're gapping down below that on Amazon at daily value area high. So uh, definitely something to keep on watch for a potential continuation to the downside. 